Hello, hello little screamers. It is so good to be back. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Hi, my name is Knackle and on this channel of Scream and Style, we talk about horror and create looks on whatever we are talking about. And this video continues the series of the final girls throughout the decades, where I go through each decade, talk about what I do, what I don't like about them, if I like their hair, or if I like how strong they are, or if I don't have to like how whiny, you get it. And then I pick a winner, the grand champion. And then at the ends, the 2000s, 2010s, maybe it'll be my cutoff 2010s, maybe 2000s. But I'm gonna group them all together and then select the big mama badass final girl, who I think reigns supreme over all of the land. So without further ado, we are gonna go through the 90s girls. Let's see who wins. So, here we go. So the first one we have in the 90s is the beloved Sydney Prescott. I believe she is a great crafted character. She's layered and she has depths to her. She, throughout the movie in the first one, she deals with intimacy. One, because of her mother's unsavory sexual reputation. Second, because of her mother's untimely death. Mix all of that up, how Sydney is trying to maintain the image, the pure image that she has of her mother versus what her mother is actually like that she is finding out through the movie and with her complicated relationship with her boyfriend. On top of all of that, Sydney becomes a really fleshed out character. We can sympathize for and cheer on. She is also one of the few who has been able to grow and develop her character through this franchise. Starting out as, you know, the typical wholesome teen who's shy, a bit timid, and unfortunately can be whiny that I could see could have turned people off. But she is someone who, in the end, does not go down without a fight and has become one of the most beloved characters in horror of all time. Moving on to Heather in Wes Craven's New Nightmare. You all know if you've seen the past video, I am a Nancy fan. However, in this one, this was a meta doozy. So not only did Wes Craven bring her back, but in the movie, she plays herself Heather, who played the character Nancy. But this follows after she played the character Nancy and Freddy is actually real and terrorizes her once more. What? Love it. And with this, she is now a mom. She becomes this ferocious, protective mama bear and doing all that she can to protect her family. Who, like always, whether she is playing Nancy or herself, she is a worthy adversary to Freddy and Kick's ass. And now we move on to Laurie Strode, starring in the movie H2O. A timeline of which I was happy with and her life is defined by the trauma in this sequel, but she's able to face it for the sake of her son rather than the 2018 version of which keeps the toxic, toxic, toxic mother narrative of which she doesn't do much with. However, what remains consistent in whatever timeline she is starring in, she is a fighter and survivor through and through a lot of people love and root for. So in the comments below, tell me, do you like the H2O timeline version or the 2018 timeline version? I'll be really interested to see what your guys' thoughts are. And now we have Kyle from Child's Play T, who is the foster sister to Andy. She is stubborn and street smart, who cannot wait to get out of her adoptive home. And what I liked about Kyle, whenever I saw the movie, I saw how her and Andy's relationship grew and she really stepped up and became the sister by helping Andy and protecting him. And with him by working together, they defeated Chucky. For a while, anyway, until he comes back, of course. I enjoyed her character and she grew on me. And like I said, the relationship between her and Andy that grew over time really warms my heart. And now we have Julie from I Know What You Did Last Summer. And I know, I still know what you did last summer. Oh, Julie, we've got some things to talk about with her. There's been debates of Julie being, of not Julie, sorry, 
of Helen being more deserving than Julie. But Julie is also, like Sydney, has two movies to build and develop her character arc to become a bigger and better character. However, it just, it didn't pay off. Look, people really don't like her. They've even used the word hate, which is a bummer. However, a pro with this character is that she breaks out of the typical girl tropes a bit in the second movie, but like I said, it didn't really, kinda, maybe. Look, the second movie was... I watched it here recently and it was terrible. I didn't like it at all. The really highlight of that movie for me was Brandy. I love Brandy. That was about it. Honestly, I felt like Freddy was just put in there just for the sake of he was in the first movie as well. It wasn't meaningful. It didn't really have an impact. It wasn't significant. He was just there, just to be there. And plus, the problem with Julie and why I think why people don't like her is because the movie tries to force the audi audience to view her as the one with the moral high grounds, but yet she never takes accountability or responsibility. Because, I mean, that girl had many chances to do the right thing, but she never did. And by the time she comes to the realization that she and her friends destroyed a family, she already realized the before, so that scene doesn't impact shit. It's just like, well, fucking duh. Yeah, we know. But anyway, I digress. Oh, and a little fun fact for you. The movie, I Know What You Did Last Summer, that she's starring in, is actually an adaptation of the 70s novel, I Know What You Did Last Summer. In the novel, it's definitely more of a mystery. Nobody dies, and it's more character profiling analysis than anything. So maybe we'll go down that rabbit hole in the future and do the similarities and the differences. That's, that's a big maybe, though. Let's, I'll be honest with you. But it's a possibility. We move on to Stokely from the faculty, a goth outcast who tries her best to portray to be a nonconformist, but she is very, in fact, concerned about appearances. An issue I believe most of us can relate to. I know I can. I wrestled with that issue a lot whenever I was younger. We're not talking about me, we're talking about Stokely here, so. But when she comes onto the scene, she comes off cold and nonchalant, but she definitely wasn't afraid to get her hands dirty. And from what I can remember, I remember Stokely was an easy character to relate and sympathize with. And I love the fact that in the end, she got her happy ending and got with a guy that she liked. Next up, we have Jody from Cherry Falls. Now, this can be debated on whether or not it should be on the list. So it was supposed to be released in 99, but it got pushed back to 2000. So I thought, why not throw her in the mix? Might as well. So Jody is a cop's daughter and she definitely acts like it. She's a final girl who can protect and defend herself and surprisingly, most of the time, make smart, decent decisions. And back then, that was always refreshing to see. And now we have Kara from Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. There's honestly not much to say about her other than the fact that she is a motherly figure who did the best she could with only secondhand information regarding Michael Myers, all the murders, Lori, the whole story, a character who knows nothing while looking after Danny. But like I said, she did her best. She did the best she could. And isn't that what matters the most? Just try. Try to do your best. A for effort, Kara. Yeah. Swear that wasn't supposed to be condescending at all. Last and maybe least, not gonna lie, we have Natalie from Urban Legend. A whiny and sad girl, although she was kind, but she didn't put up much of a fight. She heavily relied on others to do the battles for her. And so because of that, I think that is a big reason why I actually rooted for the villain in that movie. I loved that villain and her hair. Actually, I liked Natalie's and the villain's hair. I want them both. <laughs> Natalie has that kind of red color that I have dreamed about and have 
always wanted, although without having to go through the process of spending a buku amount of money. Because if you can tell, my dark hair is not easy to lighten. All right, little screamers, that concludes the 90s edition of The Final Girls. Let me know in the comments who you think should reign supreme in this decade and why. You don't have to give a little essay, just a little couple sentences will do. <laughs> that sounded like me giving you an assignment after literature class. But now comes the part where I decide who is the queen of the 90s. And my pick is Jesus. Why? This is tough because I like Stokely and I like Lori's character in the H2O, H2O timeline. And Sydney Prescott is just, I feel like those characters are well crafted and have a good amount of being fleshed out. Ah, oh, who is it? Who do I want? Who? Okay, I got it. The winner is Stokely. By a smidgen is Stokely, and the reason why I choose her is because though I haven't watched that movie in years, in a decade probably, whenever I think back on her and the other characters, I have more of a connection with her. Because to me, I feel like I relate to Stokely more than I do the other final girls. Oh, this was a hard one. This was so hard. But yes, Stokely the goth outcast is my pick for the 90s. As always, tell me what you think in the comments below. Thank you for tuning in and staying till the end, you real one. And keep a lookout for the 2000s edition of the final girls and see who wins. Like I said, that might be my cutoff or the cutoff might be 2010. You never know. You guys enjoy the rest of your day and I shall see you later. Bye.